Hey guys, what's going on? Paul here. Welcome back to another Cardano video. So lots of different DeFi opportunities opening up on top of Cardano, which is great to see. But there's a few things that people should probably understand before they dive too deep into it. Impermanent loss, risks, rewards of yield farms are definitely some of them. So in this one, we'll talk about impermanent loss, talk about what it is, how it impacts your position, show you some examples using a calculator that I found online, and I'll also show you the version of the calculator I created and put all of the links below for people who want to check it out. I'll give you some of the pointers that I look at when I'm getting involved in yield farming. Some of the things I like to see before I will put my own funds into something like that. If you think others can benefit, please do share it out there. I think this is something people can get value from. Give it a like comment below that really does help and let's jump into it okay so what is impermanent loss to put it simply impermanent loss is the opportunity cost of what you lose when you provide liquidity for traders to use your coins or tokens to trade so even simpler than this it's the difference in what would your tokens be worth if you done nothing just held them in your own wallet held them on one side versus what would they be worth after you've put them into a liquidity farm, maybe earned some LP, to LP fees, earned something from yield farming and suffered maybe some impermanent loss. What is the difference at the end of the day between holding versus getting involved? So again, for anyone who's new, when you get into a liquidity pool, you have to put in two tokens. So it, I'll, it'll make a bit more sense when we look at the calculators, but you put in two tokens worth the same when you put them in the same value. So if you put in 1000 ADA, you have to put in the equivalent value of another token on the other side. You don't then own the 1000 ADA in the pool. You own a percentage of that liquidity pool. So when you go to pull your tokens out, you pull out your percentage and that will determine how much of each token you get back out at the end. So ways that you get wrecked with impermanent loss is if one token drastically increases or decreases in price, if one token increases while the other decreases. So ways to minimize this is look at less volatile pairs. If you want to look at if the two tokens eventually return to the price you initially provided liquidity at, if you pull out at that stage, you should have minimal impermanent loss. You want to see that the two tokens increase or decrease at the same rate. So to understand liquidity as well, Maladex put out a really good article here. Liquidity makes trading possible. Efficient liquidity makes trading easy. So this goes into how liquidity is used with a centralized exchange, a DEX, the different types of ways you can use liquidity as well, because it's not just one size fits all. And there's a lot of different types of DEXs, including Maladex being built that will use liquidity in hopefully a lot more efficient way than we see with some standard AMM DEXs. So if we look... Then at the calculator that I found, I used this one here. The calculator guy on YouTube, definitely worth a follow if you are getting into DeFi to look across the board. He looks at lots of different protocols, the different opportunities that are out there and builds calculators to help you work out the numbers behind all of this to see if it's going to be worth your while getting into. And he has a link here to the calculator that I used as the base. So if we look here, this is his calculator. This is the old one here. And then the newer one here is a bit simpler. I have added in a few extra bits as well, mainly this here just to help automate some of it so you don't have to go in here and put in the figures manually. You put them all in here on one position as well as how the price difference you think the token is going to have over the time you're in the farm as well. So if you look on this side, this is all the initial values. This is all the future values. So we'll put in some examples to try and explain it. So let's say the two pairs that I'm going to put in are ADA and let's say Ethereum. So as well, this is a really nice feature he's built. If you put in the token here, the name, go and get the CoinGecko URL, put that in here, and then you'll be able to pull them token pairs in here as well. And it pulls in the latest price on it. So if I look here, the whole time is how long I'm going to stay in this farm. So let's bring this down to 10 days. The initial amount. So I'm going to put in 5,000 ADA so you can see over here, 5,000 data would mean that I need to put in roughly 1.66 Ethereum on the other side. So this is what I was saying about putting in equal values into the pool. And again, if you look at, there is a manual one here where you can go and work out how much will you will have to put in on the other side and you put in the values manually here. On this one, I've just used the logic that he had down here to automatically work it out here. So if I look then, 
I think that token one is going to grow. So I think it is going to go up by 20% in these 10 days. I think Ethereum, something's going to happen. It's going to lose 10%. Again, these are all just to give you an idea of what the impermanent loss might be. Or if you're looking back at a position, you can put in what the initial values you put in, put in the current percentages, and this should be able to work out roughly where you stand at that time. So if I look then, I can see that my 5,000 aid I initially put in at 109 is now worth 4,330 ADA because the ADA value is 131 because the pool is all the time rebalancing to have equal values on both sides. You can see I now have more Ethereum though. So I've lost 670 ADA or if you if people look at this, that I got wrecked because I lost 670 ADA. They don't take into account that on the other side, they have an extra 0.25 ETH here. So if you start looking at the dollar value at the end here, if we look at initially the value was $10,900 is what these two tokens were worth. If I just held them, didn't get involved in yield farming, then I would have $11,445. That's what they would be worth. After getting involved in the farm with these new quantities here, that I could pull out based on my LP token or my share of the L the liquidity pool, that would be worth $11,327. So my impermanent loss then is roughly 1%, which is $117. So by getting involved in this liquidity pool, I'm $117 worse off. Now I might have earned a small amount on LP fees, which would reduce that slightly, but for me, I personally wouldn't get into providing liquidity unless you have a yield farm on top because the potential gains from just the liquidity fees on standard AMM DEXs, it's just not worth it for me. The risk versus the reward, it's not there. So if we look at this then, interest earned. So this is based on the APR of the yield farm you get into. So let's say this yield farm had 120% APR. If I look at this then, I would have earned in them 10 days, I would have earned $377 on this yield farm. So my overall profit versus just holding would be $260. Now, again, this comes back in different tokens. So obviously I'd be pulling out these two quantities of the initial tokens. And this 377 is generally paid in the token of that yield farm. So lots of times, if there is no real use case for the token you're getting back, People get what they get in the yield farm, they get that token and they dump it straight away. So if you got this and you held it for a while, then potentially the value of that 377 is going to go down. So for me, when I get involved in yield farming, the majority of the time, there's a rare case where I might hold it. If the token I get from yield farming has future utility or there's other ways to earn on that, like some of the opportunities coming to Cardano, there'll be extra ways to earn on multiple yield opportunities. I'll cover them more complex situations in a while, but generally, if there's no use case, I will sell off the token that I get from yield farming to convert it back into some of the initial tokens I put in and grow my position there. So that's okay on this position, this is how it works. Look, you can change these numbers. If that was only going down 5%, you can see how it affects here. I have less impermanent loss. And again, you can change all of these. If this position only had a 50% APR, you would have smaller earnings there as well. So generally pairs like this wouldn't be too bad. When I'm getting involved, what I would generally look at is something like ADA and a stablecoin. Because when you go into a stablecoin pair, you take out one of the variables here because token two, which is our stablecoin, is going to be 0% growth. So the impermanent loss is only based on what happens with ADA then. So you can see down here, my impermanent loss is $49 based on ADA going up by 20%. So again, the APR on these types of pools is generally a bit lower. Even at 50%, I would still earn $100 in them 10 days. If that somehow was 110%, you're earning $315 in the 10 days. Again, you can change these numbers to whatever you want. This is just to give you an idea. So this will be the type of pool I would look to get into, ADA versus a stable coin, or ADA versus some of the bigger pairs that I have confidence that they're not going to be that volatile in terms of price, or that if they're going to move, they generally move in similar 
similar amounts. Ethereum ADA on a high level generally moves okay. Look, there's different times when different events are coming up that they will break away. But stuff like that, you just keep an eye on on an ongoing basis. But if you go into a really risky token that has a lot of a chance, a big chance of huge volatility. So if there's not much liquidity, one big sell order could completely tank the price. Or if something bad happens with the project, then a 50% isn't out of the question. So if that went down 50%, then you can see here that even with 110% APR, I would have impermanent loss, $821, far outweighs any potential gains. The difference is I would have lost $641 worth of tokens for having got involved. And it could potentially be even worse because you're getting back a lot more of the token that has already dumped in price. So by the time you pull these out and go to sell the whole lot or the extra tokens you have, this could be even worse because the price could have dropped more or your sell orders could force the price to fall even more. So again, getting involved with really volatile pairs or fairly new pairs is something that I wouldn't get involved in. And the opposite is true here as well. Let's say this goes up by 100%. You can see I still suffer a lot of impermanent loss here because token two is volatile and it goes way, way up in price. So it works both ways. You want to try and get fairly stable pairs. So if you look at, if I'm looking at across other chains, what I would look at is a stable coin pair. So it would be USDC versus USDT. Potentially we'll have Zed versus USDC on Cardano. Because what happens then is the token growth is going to be 0% because they're both going to hold their peg. Look, they might be slightly off if the peg is off a small bit and you might get back a few dollars less in one than the other, but generally it's going to be roughly what you put in. So if I look at this, there does be yield farms for this. Generally they are lower percentage APRs, but even at a 20% APR, you can see I'm, the chances of impermanent loss are very low, but then you have a good chance of earning some decent interest here as you get into bigger numbers. But again, the risks come into this as well, because when you get involved in providing liquidity yield farms, you're giving up custody of your own funds. So you need to balance all of that out. I hope this has been of some help. If it has, let me know down below. I'll do further videos on this. Or if you want me to expand on certain topics here, like liquidity or why I wouldn't hold projects tokens if yield farming is all that's going to be there. There has to be extra reasons on top to hold the token as well, because if there's just new supply coming in all the time, there's too much sell pressure there. But well, I'll get into all of that type of stuff in tokenomics videos fairly soon here on the channel as well. So subscribe for that. Share it out if you think others can benefit here. And I do appreciate it, everyone watching. Thanks, and I'll talk to you soon.